Investing in ETFs is probably one of the easiest ways to make money in the stock market, and a lot of people don't take advantage of it. And it's not because they don't want to, it's simply because they don't know how. And that's what this video is going to help you with. I'll even show you my personal example of me investing $100 a month in an ETF, and this is my hands-off method of making money in the stock market. But first, what is an ETF and how do you invest in it? Now, an ETF stands for Exchange Traded Funds, and if you're familiar with stocks, they're also an investing vehicle that's traded on the stock market. See, with a stock, you're simply just buying and selling ownership of one company, but with an ETF, you can be buying multiple assets. So with one ETF, it can be holding dozens, hundreds, if not thousands of stocks. And what this does is spread your risk over the stock market. See, instead of having the risk of all your money being in one company, it's in multiple. See, spreading over multiple companies minimize your risk because if one sector or one industry goes down, well, then you're safeguarded because you have multiple holdings. It's a way to make sure you don't have all your eggs in one basket, but still taking advantage of the growth of the stock market. Now, an ETF isn't a new concept. And in fact, it was made multiple decades ago. And the first ETF just recently turned 30. And if you were to hold this ETF, ticker symbol SPY, it's an overall collection of America's top 500 companies. And it's nearly returned an average of over 10% a year. And if you were to compare that to the average checking or savings account, you would effectively have no growth. In fact, inflation would have probably teared it apart. And using a simple inflation calculator, you would have needed to find a way to double that money to effectively have the same purchasing power. So you see having your money invested in the stock market and actually growing outpacing inflation is something that you need. And the best thing about this is that you could start investing into an ETF today. And you can choose to invest in the stock market without picking individual companies and just simplify it with an ETF. ETF. And all you need is a brokerage account. You can go with many of the safe sources like Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, or Vanguard, but even smaller ones like Robinhood offer the same thing. But here are a few details to simplify things to make sure that you understand before you put your money in. An ETF is traded under one ticket symbol, and within this, you're effectively buying many stocks. But just like stocks, there are many ETFs, and each ETF represents a different purpose. See, there are many ETFs that, depending on what you want to invest in, there's a use case for. So there's a whole market ETF if you want to buy something that takes up the entire economy. And there are small market ETFs if you just want to buy small cap companies. See, that's the best thing. You can pick and choose your needs. You could find some that hold only just a small amount of companies, and you can have some on a global scale that literally holds tens of thousands of them. See, the Vanguard Total Market ETF, ticker symbol VT, literally holds some of the world's largest companies and is nearly 10,000 different stocks. And with this one ticker symbol, you're able to get a collective return of all of these. And some of the two biggest ones that I personally go with are VTI and VOO. See, with VTI, it holds a range of small cap all the way to large cap companies like Google and Facebook, and this collectively has around 4,000 companies. While VOO is simply tied to the S&P 500, which is a collective of America's top 500 companies. And just like ETF holdings, you can find ETFs that are strictly related to technology. You can find ETFs strictly related to farming operations or even crypto. And if you want further help in finding what best ETF suits your needs, you can go to ETF.com. And what this does is a website that just cross compares multiple ETFs. But if you want to know what the best ETF is, that's going to be a little tricky. See, this just simply depends on what you want to be invested in. And with thousands of ETFs in the stock market, this is going to be hard to choose from. But use these tips to help you find the best one. Index and sector. Now, an index or sector are just different segments that align with different points of the economy. Think of things like technology or healthcare. And just like with ETF baskets, you're going to need to find whichever basket or sector works for you. See, many financial advisors simply just recommend going with a whole market ETF. That's why you don't have to worry about anything. And if one sector or index goes down, well, then you're risk averse because you have multiple. So your risk will simply just be minimized because you're not all in on one thing. Now, the next is going to be reputability. And this one just makes sense. If you're going to be putting your money into something, you will, you need to make sure it's established and it's been around for a while. See, while setting up an ETF does has its regulated processes, not all ETFs are made the same. And for most cases, it's safe to just stick your money with mega finance titans like Vanguard or Fidelity. They've been around doing things a while. And oftentimes, the organizations that manage these ETFs are simply within their ticket symbol. See, I've talked about VT, VTI, VOO, and the V in this all stands for Vanguard. And if you can't find it within their ticker symbol, a quick Google search will do. And the next is going to be assets under management. And this is an easy way of weeding out the smaller ETFs that have low volume and are probably just starting out. Now, this calculation is quickly done by multiplying the shares outstanding just by the market price per share. And if you were to look at the assets under management by ETFs like SPY, VTI, or VOO, these literally have hundreds of billions within them. In fact, these three ETFs alone hold $1.3 trillion. So if you were just trying to simply search for which are the largest ETFs, in this case, it's safe to say follow the money. Now, this last one's gonna be expense ratio. And this is overall how and why these ETFs function. See, I already talked about how companies like Vanguard will manage an ETF. Well, this comes at a cost. See, they're not doing this for free 
but they will collectively hold a majority of these companies and they will allow you to invest in the ETF but it comes at a cost. And for ETFs, this cost is called the expense ratio. And to simplify things, the lower the number, the better for the investor. And this is why you'll often hear VTI and VOO often as some of the best ETFs because these literally have a fraction of a percent. The expense ratios for these ETFs is 0.03%. And this isn't calculated like a monthly or an annual bill. See, as an investing perspective, an ETF fee is collected on the fund's net return. So for an example, like VOO's ETF, it has an expense ratio of 0.03%. And this just means that the total return before the fees could be an example of 10%. Well, the net return to the investor would be 9.97. So this expense is just baked into the return. So as an investor, you don't have to do anything. And with the average ETF ratio being 0.47%, Vanguard's is nearly 10 times cheaper. And this is simply all because of size. Vanguard manages nearly $8 trillion. So it's safe to say that they're not hurting. But be warned, because you could find some ETFs with crazy expense ratios. And I'm talking high 3%. And when these funds are just simply doing the same thing, it just makes sense to go with the existing and more reputable option. And just to show you how easy it is to invest into an ETF. For two years, I invested $100 a month hands off and it netted a return of 27%. And I simply did nothing with a hands off approach other than me establishing it to deposit $100 a month. And if you want to see that video, just simply click right here and like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what other topics you want me to talk about down in the comments. The best single thing you could have done on March 11th, 1942, when I bought my first stock was just buy an index fund. And, and, and never look at a headline, never think about stocks anymore, just like you would do if you bought a farm.